Dwell time refers to the length of time an attacker is able to roam free on your network without being detected. It's a number calculated by adding the mean time of detection with the mean time of repair. According to FireEye, the average global dwell time in 2020 was 56 days. That means that on average, an attacker had nearly two months inside a network before being cut off. EDR and XDR are tools that attempt to shorten that dwell time by detecting and responding to threats quicker. While EDR focuses on detection and response at the endpoint level, XDR expands on that to include other critical areas of our network like our firewall and cloud applications. In this video, we'll take a look at what exactly EDR and XDR do and how MDR uses these technologies to provide a service. Before we go any further, please take a moment to hit a like on this video to give me a boost in the YouTube algorithm, and subscribe if you want to stay on top of our latest cybersecurity and tech-related videos. To comprehend XDR and MDR, we need to first understand what EDR is and the problem it's trying to solve. EDR stands for Endpoint Detection and Response, and it's an endpoint client that's not just focused on the prevention of breaches, but in the detection and mitigation that happens after the execution of malware has already occurred. In other words, detecting malware that the antivirus engine didn't detect and the tools for containment or mitigation when those are detected. Let's start by breaking down an infected endpoint into two stages, pre-infection and post-infection. Pre-infection is where your traditional antivirus tools generally live. This might use tools like virus signatures and machine learning to prevent known malware from ever executing on the machine. However, we as cybersecurity professionals know that this is not very effective. Even the best antivirus engines are only known to block between 50 to 60% of the real-world threats that we see on a daily basis. This is where we move to post-infection or post-execution tools, and in this stage is all about detecting and responding to threats that have already been executed on the machine. For example, we know traditional antivirus is looking at signatures of known malware. Those signatures can easily be modified just enough to sneak past antivirus signatures. However, if we look at the behavior of the malware itself, it does not change no matter how much the malware is obfuscated. This is where detection portion of post-infection comes into play, by looking at the behavior of an unknown file once it's executed. If that behavior is highly suspicious or known bad, then we want to diffuse or contain it as much as possible. This is where we generally attack ransomware by trying to stop the unknown file from ever encrypting files on the disk. Next, we move on to the response stage, which is where we automate playbooks and quarantine users, isolate devices, or roll back changes depending on what our playbooks may dictate. A key component of the EDR process is the ability to use forensics to facilitate the threat hunting process. This could be as simple as searching your EDR clients for a YAR rule or a specific process, or combing through recorded events on the endpoint itself. This can vary from vendor to vendor, but most EDR tools record forensic data when the file passes the pre-execution phase. The forensic data could include metadata like OS processes that were modified when a file was opened. This is fundamentally how many EDR vendors were able to assist in finding the impact of the SolarWinds breach by looking through common metadata across the infected endpoints. The ultimate goal of the post-infection phase is to minimize the dwell time between when an incident occurred and when that breach was ultimately contained and remediated. As mentioned previously, in 2020, the average dwell time was 56 days, which is actually down 28% from the previous year, in part because of the adaptation of EDR across so many organizations. While endpoints are a critical component of the attack surface, it's really a small part of the big picture that makes up our network. Modern networks have IoT devices, cloud applications, firewalls, and many other areas that must be considered. That brings us to XDR, or Extended Detection and Response. Gartner defines XDR as a SaaS-based, vendor-specific, security threat detection and incident response tool that natively integrates multiple security products into a cohesive security operation system that unifies all licensed components. Put another way, XDR ingests data from multiple security products in order to correlate telemetry data that would otherwise be difficult to find manually. By having integration with these various products, XDR gives you the ability to respond to threats either automatically or manually. At a high level, there's three main components that make up XDR. The integration, the analysis, and the response. The integration piece is a critical component to any XDR platform, and that's the level to which the XDR solution can ingest and work with the products on your network. This means not only monitoring telemetry data like syslog and SNMP, but also having deep integration via API to respond to threats when an incident is detected. 
With the telemetry data being ingested by all the relevant sources on your network, XDR then normalizes and correlates that data between all the different data types and vendors. This part of the process is the analyze or detect phase, and it's usually powered by some version of an artificial intelligence tool to find outliers in the breadcrumbs of data. The AI engine is trained to look for behaviors from all the telemetry data ingested throughout the network. And here lies the beauty of XDR. What would be nearly impossible for a team of SOC engineers to do manually, XDR can calculate these breadcrumbs in real time, eventually finding patterns of behavior that otherwise would have gone undetected. When the AI engine determines that an investigation is deemed to be a security risk, the response phase can automatically remediate the issue by responding to the relevant security devices depending on the playbook that you have configured. For example, this could include blocking an IP at your firewall, quarantining a user at the switch port, or blocking a domain on your mail server. Ultimately, XDR is about an AI system that can take in telemetry data, make a decision based on the supervised learning it has received, and then respond to the relevant device to mitigate the risk on your network. While EDR and XDR are focused on specific technologies that detect and respond to threats on your network, MDR is a service handled by a third party. Gartner defines MDR, or Managed Detection and Response, as a 24-7 threat monitoring, detection, and lightweight response service to customers leveraging a combination of technologies. A report just released by Forrester in Q4 of 2020 goes a bit beyond Gartner's definition to define the key components of the MDR service as security analytics, proactive threat hunting, and automated incident response using SOAR or manual response using predefined playbooks. The same report goes on to say this, the quality of the MDR service depends on its ability to incorporate extended detection and response visibility from not just EDR software, but also network analysis and visibility tools, network traffic analysis, and analysis of security log data. In other words, the ability to use XDR effectively. Because the MDR market is still somewhat being defined, providers can vary greatly in the services they provide. Forrester groups four segments that measure the level of capability provided by MDR providers today. The first level is what I would call the base level services. This will include Gartner's definition of basic MDR services like proactive threat hunting, investigation, and response. The next level would be a managed EDR service, where the MDR provider is managing the EDR client and providing the base level services on top of that. So this will include the threat hunting, the investigation, and the response as well. The advanced service will include incident response as a service, which will also offer traditional boots on the ground personnel to assist with incidents. The common theme around all three of these topics that we discussed in this video is detecting and responding to threats quicker. EDR is usually the starting point in our journey towards lowering the dwell time because endpoints are generally the biggest risk in our attack surface. However, good coordinated attacks usually involve more than just the endpoints, and that's why XDR is the next evolution. EDR and XDR are not mutually exclusive, but complementary. Both provide insight into what's happening on your network that would otherwise be difficult or impossible to do manually. The reality is that a lot of organizations don't have the manpower or expertise to take on EDR or XDR themselves. And for this, more and more MSPs are providing MDR as the next level of managed services. Well, that does it for this video, guys. Hope you found it informative. Please drop a line below and let me know what you think about EDR, XDR, and MDR. Let me know if I missed anything or if you have any insight into anything that we discussed here today. If you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe to stay on top of our latest releases here at the CISO Perspective.